Welcome back, Nauta fans. We have the next game. It's going to be Daniel Kalina and Gin. Or Jin. Jin. I guess Jin, really, because that's. I don't know why it's Gin the whole time. It's Jin. Yeah, it's going to be. It's going to be. Well, possibly more interesting. I mean, Golden Kmar was totally unexpected, but a lot of that thing was Golda, just the fact that Golda had their settings messed up. I mean, they're good sport about it. Or good enough sport about it in the ARR. They took their loss. I mean, Kmar was ahead, so that's that. But anyway, Dealing Kalina and Gin, or Jin, are going to be next. Whoever wins that against Vanishaw and Legman and Awesome are playing their game as well to fight against Kmar. And now the players just getting themselves started, and we are on a totally different map than before. And we have here, looks like Dino Kalina over in the northwest side of the map going for arm. While Jin also going for arm on the northeast side of the map. And this map, I should know the name. Actually, it's surprisingly not Valus Mountainatus. It is... Why can't I remember the name of this map? I don't have to. Conquest of Paradise. That's what this map is. Not sure why they're playing this instead of Valus Mountainatus, given that that is the stage of the tournament it's supposed to be played in. But I'm fine with this. That's actually the loser's bracket one, or loser's bracket round one map, but you know what, this is fine. I'm good with this. So we have, this, well, Metal Extractor's coming here. So Metal Extractor's a little collector, and it is going to be, looks like, let's see what's the order here. Looks like a pretty standard, I'm not, not even four and four, it's actually four, three and six, then factory, then another three metal. While we have... Jin, on the other hand, who is going for four, it looks like, yeah, it looks like they're going for pretty similar, both players going for fairly economic strategies before setting up, although a really far back K-Bot Lab. Jin is, I'm not sure why Jin is the K-Bot Lab that far back. Surprised they don't have it further forward because, I mean, okay, if their opponent's over in the northwest, which they are, there's still a good chance they can be attacked from the south, just for the sake of being raided out that way. But it looks like both players are in the north, so they don't have to worry too much about this. The K-Bot Lab here is going to work okay. It's going to work well enough. And then from there, looks like K-Bot Lab over... Yeah, this is where I'd expect a K-Bot Lab to be built, where Daniel Kalina is building it. Because this is... Oh, oops. Where Daniel Kalina has it just makes more sense to me. Uh, sorry. Adjust this thing. Yeah. What the... Don't... What the... hell's going on? Why is... Oh, damn it. Well, this was working. Great. Uh, trying to get in the spectator widgets that I need. Okay, there we go. Refresh it. Not sure why that was screwing up, but anyway. Yeah, so Dino Kalina has k Lab going in for very early uh, flea. While well, getting Peewee flea and early constructor as well. Actually, a lot of early constructors here. Whereas early... Okay, early marquee. So we're going for a mobile radar for Dino Kalina. While Jin, on the other hand, not sure if they're going to be building Static Raider at any point. They don't have it in their queue. But they're only going pretty heavily for those Peewees, as opposed to the Fleas coming in from Daniel Kalina. So the Fleas are going to go down pretty quick to the Peewees. And down they go. That's one Flea down. I mean, the Fleas are going to die quickly. The point is just to scout out, see what's going on. So Daniel Kalina is actually going to be getting ahead thanks to that scouting. They're going to have an easier time with the scouting. We do have one flea coming in here, which does go down pretty quick. But these two fleas here will be able to scout out a fair amount of what Jin's up to. And right now, Jin, Jin and Daniel Kalina are about even. Actually, Daniel Kalina is slightly behind in metal, but basically about the same. And these fleas are actually doing some harassment here. Some pretty meaningful harassment too, getting rid of one of the metal extractors, closing with Solar Collector as well. And down goes a Metal Extractor, and that puts the players back even once again. So Daniel Kalina just pumping out Peewees. Switched off from Fleas, doesn't need to scout anymore, pumping out Peewees. While, like I said, Peewee, Flea, Fark. It's kind of the mix that Jin is going for, and I don't think I really agree with that. And Jin going for a second K-Bot Factory as well. No indication of what's being built in that yet. Unlike this one, which is... Which very much has the indication of what's being built. Like I said, it is... Okay, going into Fark. Now, at this point, how many Peewees does Jin have? About seven. 
Compared to... Oh, wait, this is the entire map worth, but yeah. Compared to, I think, somewhere around... Yeah, 18 or so for Daniel Kalina. So Daniel Kalina is pretty ahead. Economically speaking, Daniel Kalina is also quite ahead. I mean, D Daniel has 15 medal to 12. Not a huge advantage yet, but it, it can pile up. The Dilly Harassment is actually kind of cheeky, too. Got some Peewees in for defense, but it's not the biggest deal. Not yet. Not when it doesn't matter. Not when there's not where being attacked. Being attacked over to the north instead. That's where this is going. And it is... Oh yeah, and those of you who are complaining about delay... Well, part of that delay is actually intended. There is an intentional one minute delay. There is also an unintentional 30 second delay or so because of Twitch. And yes, I am going to be testing out Hitbox next, starting next week. I mentioned that in my cast on Thursday. I mentioned this again. I am going to be testing out basically Hitbox throughout October, like starting next week throughout October. And see how that works. Because Hitbox doesn't have as much of a delay and either due to p less traffic or better servers overall, they have an easier time actually getting the full stream to everybody who can actually download it, especially in Europe, because they're actually situated in Austria instead of San Francisco as Twitch is. Not sure what city in Austria, though, but they are in Austria. So they're in the middle of Europe. Anyway, it doesn't matter right now, because we're on Twitch, and we have Peewees coming in here doing a lot of damage. Neil Kalina going in for a very powerful early assault, getting rid of basically everything that came... That Jin has dealing quite a bit of damage, and I shouldn't be surprised. Daniel Kalina is a very experienced player. I've not actually seen Jin play Nana, but I don't know if Jin's played Nana in the last few months since the last tournament. Don't know how experienced they are, but they are definitely at a disadvantage right now, and economically speaking, they're even. Militarily speaking, not so much. And Daniel Kalina going for an air factory, but Jin does have multiple K bot factories coming in with two Peewees at a time. And this air factory for Daniel Kalina, not actually just started halfway through. About a minute, le 30 seconds to a minute left, depending on metal. So as it stands, there's actually a pretty good chance that Jin will be able to get back in this game. It's nowhere near done yet. In fact, Jin going over to the south trying to do some raiding. Raiding out of the south, and Daniel Kalina does have radar, and will be able to spot these Peewees. But actually, that's a mobile radar. Oh, right, wow! Okay, just watch this. The marquee has just moved out of range, such that this set of Peewees is in its radar shadow as it moved. If it had remained stationary... Daniel Kalina would have seen this coming, and why is this being paused? Well, okay, that's bizarre. But anyway, the the point is is that that Marky could have seen these Peewees if it stayed put. That's going to be embarrassing. Whereas with Daniel Kalina, Daniel, sorry, with Jin, Jin a static radar over here, and actually quite a large range too. So Jin sees this incoming, knows. Decent targets for harassment in the north side here. Decent targets for harassment they can get at. Actually, get at the factory here as well. Which is not protected by the tower, so... I, I Okay, this also is protected by the tower, so before anyone starts saying anything about how this one's in a more defensible position, well, it might be because it's by a corner, but it's not anywhere near the tower. Like, the tower basically still can't easily defend it. It still actually can defend it a bit better, though, because it doesn't have as many angles you can attack from. Though this one, it's actually within range of the tower. So it's really not saying much. Anyway, once this gets going again, whenever that is, not sure when that's going to be. Not sure what happened with Daniel Kalina. They've just sort of popped out. Just randomly popped out. I'm just gonna... I realize this is a little bit extreme, but Nada has a very vertical interface anyway, so it's probably not the biggest deal once you get a lot of factories. Because you select it, and this side is all taken up, and the factories take up the next side for spectators. I don't know. I'm trying to improvise with what I have. Doesn't much matter though because the game is not going. We are still in pause. Very static game. Just look at the stuff close up. Actually, maybe maybe let's not look at the stuff close up because they they don't look much different from OTA, and they do look different. They're improved, but still. So yeah, air factory. Thirty seconds to be done. And more Kmon labs coming up. Oh, we should probably get out of line of sight view. Hey. So, viewers, how are your how are your days going? How have you been? Just, I mean, admittedly, it's a weird conversation to have when I'm speaking, and then you're going to hear me three minutes later. I think it's actually about the time delay between here and Mars. Not totally sure. 
Actually, no, no, that's less than that. I think it's that's still within the range of light seconds. Yeah, a bit of lag time. Ay. Okay, why... Why is there a pause? Second game in a row we've had a pause. This is not going well. Probably have to just cut this out. Hey, great. Okay, well, not just gonna happen there. <sighs> so yeah, pausing is not permitted. Should has to be drilled into people's heads. But yeah, anyway, Daniela Kalina going for some hammers on top of the Pee-wee. So yeah. Hammer primarily. Some peewees as well, but mostly hammers. Trying to get rid of the peewee numbers that Jin is going to be pumping out very strongly. And Daniil's air factory is almost done. There we go. Air factory is done. And it will soon start pumping out stuff. What is it pumping out? There we go. It is pumping out Hellfish. Non-strategic attack bomber, which will be an interesting choice. So we have, right now, still an advantage to Daniil Kalina for economy. Still an advantage for cable production to Jin, but Jin... Jin had to retreat there. Actually, a lot of people, uh, 20 peewees, just a nice little ball here. And like I said before, stuff basically does not have to fire through each other. An air factory coming up for Daniil Kalina, sorry, for Jin as well. Daniil Kalina getting up that first Hellfish, it'll be about 10 seconds left. And more hammers coming in, and these hammers are going to be the big thing. That's that's going to be able to just work very nicely as crowd control here. And with the Peewees running interference, it should be very difficult for Jin to be able to get in here. Now, Jin, on the other hand, does have these Peewees to the south, and once again, I point out the Marquee has basically not seen them. Or these ones they've seen. These ones have been spotted. Daniel Clan is aware of those. But the ones to the south, not so much. So now, Jin has a really strong harassment force that they could be throwing out if they need to. But they need to be throwing that out pretty soon. There's not much time left. And they are, in fact, doing that right now. Harassment Force is on the move, going in from the south and from the center, or, well, it was sort of on the move, just regrouping, apparently. Not actually moving into attack yet, and the north side has to regroup as well. Jin apparently having a bit of trouble multitasking all this stuff. They are sending one of their harassment groups north, but they, these guys need to meet up. They need to be hitting at the same time. There are hammers, there are peewees. There, I mean, Daniil Kalina is prepared for this. And at the same time, in the north side, we have Jin, who has had to move back. So, Jin down by about three metal. Not a huge deal. Still pretty even game. But yeah, Jin does have the possible... Has the opportunity to really turn this around right here, or at least did. Kind of losing that by time. But I mean, a couple of these... This set here, going over here, getting rid of these metal extractors, wouldn't be a bad idea. In fact, trying to just cut through? Going for a cut? This tower here, its attack range isn't that big. It, these metal extractors are very vulnerable. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, well, okay, actually, I don't know if Daniil, if Jin is aware of that. Daniil does have them in the radar shadow. But Jin should be aware of that, and Daniil would start to fall behind very quickly if that happened. And Hellfish coming up for, oh, really? Okay, Hellfish are being planned out for here. Now the factory has just started building up, and Daniil has gotten one, I think. Oh, no, I'm saying one, he's gotten three. A lot of bombers coming here, so at this point, it's just getting harder and harder for Jin to actually harass. There's really no chance to do so. Jin is expanding a little bit to the south, which is nice to see. But not harassing. Not dealing with the metal extractors that Daniil has. Or dealing with this force over in the center. I mean, not flanking it out. Not dealing with... I mean, this area here is too heavily defended. Don't bother with that. But it's more of the center here. But the more Hellfish come in, the harder it is for that to be done. And a small harassment attempt by Daniil... Actually, doing better than I expected, but that Peewee going down still fairly quickly. It's like, what in the world is Jin waiting for? Jin isn't even producing from... Jin's only producing from Air Factory and from one K-Bot Factory, the North K-Bot Factory, not producing from the South K-Bot Factory anymore. That's completely idle. While at the same time, we have... Fark Hammer, Peewee... Yeah, another market coming in as well, but basically we have from Daniil, 
basically the same setup of units we had before. So right now, whatever numerical advantage Jin was trying to get into, that's pretty much stopped. Jin does not have... Well, Jin has... No, Jin has much, much weaker economy. And thanks to Hellfish, has lost a lot of Peewees already. It's a fair amount of damage, which, like I said, just... Harass! Why are you not harassing? For goodness sakes, Jin, do something! I mean, there's so many... I mean, I can see it, and I know you can see it. At least part of it. You can see this one. This one's open. And these units are just sitting here dying. It would be better if they had died trying to kill the metal extractors, getting rid of all of them. Possibly even flanking out the north side and breaking that. I don't know what Jin is doing. I could finally... Oh, right. I don't have that hockey set either. I'll have to do that after the game. Anyway, now at this point, Daniil is just moving out, taking the south, and Jin letting that happen. Not even counterattacking, just just hanging out. The Peewees are just hanging out, not doing anything at all. I mean, these Peewees were there for a long time. They were there for about five minutes easily. They could have gone north. They could have dealt with these metal extractors really early on. They could have dealt with these metal extractors at pretty much any time. And they didn't. And the health is trying to do what damage they can to the north, but I think... Jin is so tunnel visioned on that north, they didn't even notice the fact that this metal extractor is open and probably these metal extractors are also open, or they could be checked out. And while there was a defensive line here, they weren't going to get to these metal extractors that quickly. They were open. That. I just don't believe that. And Jin throws in the towel. Wow, okay, well, I mean, Jin had a chance there, but decides they don't. I think they might have been either intimidated or just tunnel vision on the north, because Daniil Kalina is a good player. But yes, my only guess is intimidation. Also, th there's a resign button for a reason. Just to point that out. Yeah, that that is game. Wow, okay, so Daniil Kalina takes it. Not a huge surprise. Daniil Kalina had the advantage from the start, but even then, Jin was getting back in. Jin had a chance. I am really surprised at that. So anyway, it'll be Daniil and Vanersha. Came on Lega Man as well. I think that might be going on right now. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is going on right now. I just... I just don't know. I really just don't know. I don't get that. Like, why... I don't know. I'm really very surprised. Because that was not at all what I expected. The way the game was going, it was just, it looked like we had something coming in from Jin. That Jin could have basically taken that, but it looks like, no, no, in fact, that wasn't the case. I'm just very surprised. Well, at least Jin could have at least gone back in the game. But instead, we just had... Well, we had nothing, really. I'm... I don't know. I'm not sure what to say to that. I just know that Jin had that game. Or at least had a possibility of getting back in the game. It was a really even game, and then Jin just sort of waited around with their peewees. Like, they could have sent one or two just north to scout out, because there's a lot of units they have. They could just send a handful up. Just to scout around the map to see what's going on. Anyway, I think we're going to be going on to probably Daniil and Vanersha because, like I said, the Kmart Lego Man game is being played at the moment. And also updating the brackets here. Gold have been knocked out! Oh. Wow, okay, so Gold has apparently been knocked out either because of the settings issues or. Maybe they paused again and got disqualified for it. I don't know. So yeah, apparently technical issues due to the way that Nauta handles the settings, the engine settings, has messed up Gota. That is really unfortunate because, I mean, Gota is pretty much pegged to win this. At this point, I think Daniil is probably the favorite to win, though Kmart did a really good job against Gota. Well, settings issues, I suppose. It makes it hard to tell. But even against Common Player, Kmart did a good job. So I don't know. Kmart Lega Man still going on. Daniil Kalina, I'm saying, is probably the favorite to win at this point. And Jin and Common Player still in it. Common Player haven't beaten Moon Man. Awesome losing to Leifel after losing to Lego Man. But yeah, Gold up being knocked out. 
Sheesh, that... Like, seriously, that... I don't know if that's a developer thing or what, but it's... it's ser I guess, for the developers, make sure you weren't screwing with spring settings. Because that's a terrible thing to... Like, don't screw with spring settings. I mean, Gold is using spring lobby, maybe that's a problem, I don't know. 